Hello, Mount Rodmore here, aka Nick, and I am back to talk about Big Brother 26. And uh, ordinarily, I would start on last night's episode because it's Monday and there was an episode last night and I streamed two days ago, but there was actually one thing that I meant to talk about in my last stream and I forgot. I, I put it separately in my notes to save it for last, but I just... I started looking away from my notes. I looked online, so I just... I wasn't looking at my notes, and I completely f forgot to do it. But there is one thing I wanted to talk about, so... I'm just gonna get into it. And, uh, it was a conversation about... The moon landing. Brooklyn is like... Do you actually think the moon landing was real? Do you think we landed on the moon? And Cam is like, I think we landed on a moon. And I'm gonna shoot you straight. If I was in the house, and I heard this conversation, these two would be my new targets. I lost all respect for them in an instant. Brooklyn, in particular, was someone I was really respecting in this game. But after that, uh, no, that's that's gone. And like, I, I'd just be like, I've gotten the sense that you two are not trustworthy individuals. I wouldn't know where I'd say it's because you believe some crazy conspiracy theories, but, you know, I'd say that to the cameras and they'd figure it out when they got home. First, I want to talk about Brooklyn. Um, in all honesty, I should have expected some talk like this from her, considering her friend, Aaron, from BB-15. And, you know, it it just all kind of hit me. When we were able to vote to put someone as a nominee for America's Veto, why didn't we vote for Brooklyn? Just based on that? I mean, I get it. Like, I had come around on her, and I was respecting her game. But, I just, I feel like we all kind of took our foot off the gas in that regard. And we all just basically forgot about it. And we shouldn't have. That's as good a reason as any to nominate someone when America, frankly, shouldn't have any say in this kind of thing. But I digress. And now I want to talk about Cam <clears throat> and what he said. He says, I think we landed on a moon. Not our moon. The one that's about 250,000 miles away. No. We would have had to go to Mars for the next closest moon. Mars has two little asteroids spinning around it. Those are its moons. Does Cam actually think we might have gone to Mars's moon before our own moon? I mean, where does he think this moon is? It, like, did, did he think we went to Jupiter and one of its 158 moons? Go to Saturn and one of its 97 moons? I just... <clears throat> I don't understand how you can be like, yeah, okay, we landed on a moon, but but no, not, not our moon. No, 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 that's impossible. There's no way that could be done. It's just... They're stupid. They're honestly stupid. This... Honestly, I recommend the Adam Ruins Everything episode where he talks about conspiracy theories, and the first thing he talks about is the moon landing. And his big argument is that in 1969, it would have been harder to fake the moon landing, believably, than to just go to the moon in the first place. So, I, I'll, I'll defer to Adam Conover on this one, but these two are ridiculous.
anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to keep talking about the show normally. I'm going to talk about them whenever they came up whenever they come up, although Cam doesn't really come up too often because what's he doing? But uh just know that anytime I do talk about either of them, just know there's a there's a subtext of a severe lack of respect on my part for both of them. All right. But yes, last night we did have an episode. We got to see the HOH competition. And we got to see more of the aftermath. Or at least the casuals got to see more of the aftermath of Kenny leaving. Honestly, no one's really sad he's gone, but we get Chelsea, who's just over Tucker, continuously winning. And considering he just won the veto, she's probably still mad. <laughs> we got Quinn in the diary room doing his best Tucker impression where he's just yelling at the camera. I didn't really I don't even remember what he said, I just remember the yelling. And apparently Cam warned Tucker that he was the target a couple hours before eviction. I did not know about this. I don't know if other people did or not. I just I missed that one. So we get to the HOH competition. It is called Bad AI. And it's the knockout comp. They're shown three pictures, and they have to find the one that is bad AI. Like there's some kind of giveaway that it's not that it's not a real picture. I mean, none of them are real pictures, but there's one where it's just extra wrong. Like somebody has extra fingers or something. Like that was that was the first thing to catch. Like, it was always something different, but that was the first big one. Well, I mean, that was the first one, period. And it's like, that is the big one when it comes to, uh, when it comes to AI. If you're not sure if it's real, look at the fingers, because that's generally a giveaway. But yes, it's the knockout comp. Classic knockout rules. If you get it right, you pick the next two. But if you get it wrong, you're out and your opponent picks the next two. <laughs> and then they just knock each other out until there's only one left. Gosh. Throat's killing me right now. Sorry about that. Okay, so the first two are drawn at random, and it's Cam versus Hemo. And this is the one where it's just, hey, look, there's Pooch, but he's got like seven fingers on each hand. So it was, it was Pooch. Uh, good old Pooch. So Cam wins this one. He gets it right. So he picks the next two and he chooses Quinn and Tucker. Quinn buzzes in first, but he's wrong. So Tucker wins the round. And Tucker picks Chelsea and, to my surprise, Angela. And Angela wins. She picks Rabina and Brooklyn next. And Brooklyn gets it right. Brooklyn picks Angela and Mackenzie. Angela wins. And she picks Brooklyn again, which becomes a point of contention later. She picks Brooklyn and Leah, and Brooklyn is on to her, and Brooklyn gets it wrong, so Leah advances, picks the next two. She picks Cam and Joseph. Cam, once again, gets it right, and he picks t and Tucker, and t gets it right, and she chooses Angela and Leah, and Angela wins again. Angela's really cleaning up this competition, and considering they're all targeting her, then that's pretty good for her. So, if Angela gets it right, Cam and t are up automatically, because they're the only two left. Cam gets it right, then it's Cam versus Angela in the final round. 
And Angela wins, as we all know. But yeah, now, on top of every other reason people are targeting her, Angela has two HOH wins in the first four weeks, so... She also has Comp Beast as a reason as to why she's being targeted. Theoretically. So we get the Angela versus Brooklyn segment. It's very cringy. They both are just really over each other. Angela's like, is this high school? And I'm like, you tell me. You're the one who's been acting like a teenager since the beginning. Angela talks more, like, just kind of enjoying her power, and it's like she genuinely doesn't realize that Quinn is just going to straight up overthrow her with his power. We get a Tubina segment. Tucker and Rabina are shown getting all up on each other. Then we get an Angela Quinn conversation, and talked about this before, where Quinn kind of gives up more info than he should have. Like, he's trying to get info out of Angela, and he just gives up more info. And she's like, who's your hard no? And he's like, uh, emo. Who's your second and third hard no? And honestly, like, <laughs> I mean, Quinn wasn't, Quinn was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I just, I do, let's see how the edit is absolutely burying Angela. But the casuals will never like her. This segment did not make her look good. Even though, technically, she got more info out of Quinn. So, she, if we want to get technical, she kind of won this confrontation. But, they didn't depict her in the best light. <laughs> but they, they made this conversation seem like that was Quinn's trigger to decide to use his power. It wasn't. He had decided long before. Uh, we get... We get the part where, uh... Brooklyn's going into the closet and she opens it and Chelsea's in there and scares her. That was pretty funny. And Brooklyn deserves it. Um... Quinn's doing his one-on-ones. Now, I completely missed what he was wearing when he was actually doing them. It wasn't until the episode when I realized what his outfit was. He was wearing a suit that honestly looked like something Jim Carrey would have worn in The Mask. <laughs> it was just very comic booky, Very over the top. And I know that's his, that's his finale outfit, probably. I mean, it has to be. And it's just... I, uh... It just kind of adds to the overall extra oeuvre that Quinn gives off. Then Quinn activates his power. Everyone's called to the living room. Angela has a deep fake, and she's like, That's not me! And it's like, yeah, everybody knows, Angela. You don't have to play it up. And on top of that, Quinn explains afterwards that, like, his reasons for nominating people. And by the way, it was Cedric Tucker McKenzie, in case you forgot. Cedric volunteered. So that was the episode. On to the feats. From... From since my last stream, which was on Saturday. Cedric tells Angela he's worried about a tie. And he asks if she'd break a tie in his favor. She says yes. It says about a 50-50 chance she means it. I mean, Tucker's off the block at this point, so... It wouldn't be between Cedric and Tucker. Like, I mean, that wouldn't be a tie anyway. That'd be everyone wanting Tucker out. But... I think there's like a 50-50 chance that Angela actually means this, that she'd save Cedric in the event of a tie. It's just, I don't believe a word out of Angela's mouth anymore. And it's not even that I think she's lying all the time, it's that I think she's just wrong a lot, 
And I think even if she means it, when she says she'll save Cedric, she might forget that she meant it. Uh, T-Core and Kimo meet several times talking about asking Quinn not to nominate Rubina. But they never actually get around to it. And they don't even do anything in an actual conversation with Quinn where he suggests working with Leah again. Like, that was their moment, I think, to actually say, hold on, let's let's not... We we got to tell you some stuff about Leah. I think that was the moment. If the moment hadn't passed already, then that was the moment. <clears throat> Tucker tells Joseph about five points. Joseph suggests an alliance of the two of them, Angela, Tikor, and Kimo. <clears throat> That would be something. I don't think it would ever happen. I don't think t and Kimo are that interested in truly working with Tucker. I think they just find him a little too chaotic. Quinn guarantees to Joseph that he can win the slip and slide competition. Joe doesn't. Joseph doesn't think so. Because he's only 5'6", and Quinn... Well, Joseph says that Paul won at 5'7". Like, he won when he was at 5'7". And I'm just thinking, wrong pronouns, Mr. Superfan. Last I checked, Paul uses they, them pronouns. I think I might have worded that wrong, to be perfectly honest. I, I think I didn't write it correctly in my uh, in my notes. Chelsea tells Brooklyn and Joseph that Tucker is their biggest enemy, and the way to mess with his game is to take out Rubina. Which isn't wrong, because that is taking out a close ally of a big threat. But... A distraction-free Tucker might be a more dangerous Tucker, if he wasn't dangerous enough already. Like, then Tucker is just coming for everybody. So. I mean, again, I see the logic in wanting to take Rubina out. Chelsea is not overly close with her, and she's a little closer to Mackenzie, even if she doesn't really like Mackenzie that much. So I just, I don't know. I think there's pros and cons to both. So, we get Tucker being Tucker again, possibly. He tells Mackenzie he once again may not use the veto on himself. He may not use it at all, or he may even use it on Mackenzie. Just so he can compete against Cedric and send him out. First of all, Mackenzie would go over Cedric if she's nominated next to him. In fact, even over Rubina, Mackenzie is not a guaranteed survival. Like, that conversation would be had many times leading up to the eviction. On the top of that, Tucker told Angela and Rubina that he would say he wasn't going to use it to see if that information spread. And, like, I hope that's the case because there's only so long you can play like this until your recklessness catches up with you, Tucker. Quinn talks to Rubina, says he's putting her up, He's like, I'm sorry. But he says Mackenzie is the target. She asks if there's anyone else he could put up. And of course, it could have been Leah, but t and Chemo are just playing a little too passive. They just haven't pushed as hard as they could have. 
Rabina does a cam talk where she's hyping herself up, saying, I got this. If Taylor could survive the block, I can. Okay, let's calm down a little bit there, Rabina. Taylor was nominated three times in the first four weeks. You're on week four, and this is your first time. So let's just chill a little bit. I mean, I saw Taylor coming out and being like, you know what? If someone uses my story to give themselves confidence, then good for them. And, you know, fair point. I'm just saying, you know, don't go fully comparing yourself to Taylor yet, Rabina. <laughs> Tucker tells Kimo he's still thinking about saving Mackenzie so he can beat Cedric and get him out. I figured he was probably still lying, but I'm starting to think, uh, I guess you can never really tell with him. Then he tells Angela, who, by the way, is his closest ally at this point, he tells her he can beat Cedric in the arena. So now I'm thinking this is starting to get serious. Angela pleads with him to just use the veto on himself. And Tucker's like, I mean, it's just, it's just an idea, you know, it's just an idea. Quinn and Brooklyn talk. They agree that Mackenzie is the target and Rabina is the backup. So... Quinn's the one, Quinn's the, the HOH for all intents and purposes, and Brooklyn is probably the most influential person in the house, so if they're saying Mackenzie's got to go, then I think Mackenzie should, uh, should really start hyping herself up to win the AI arena. But I do find it kind of interesting that Brooklyn and Chelsea, who are really close with each other and are probably the, the two most powerful people in the game right now, they are on two opposite sides of this. Chelsea wants Rabina out, Brooklyn wants Mackenzie out. So there is a little bit of a, a mystery there for me as far as who gets their way, especially if it does come down to the two of them on Thursday night. Like those, They're the final two nominees. I think that would confirm once and for all who the real most powerful person in the game is, Brooklyn or Chelsea. And I gotta say, at this point, I think... No. No, I think Brooklyn would get her way on this one. But I think the battle would continue, because I do think Chelsea is still a very influential player. Quinn asks Tucker, what do you want to do with the veto? Kind of an insane question to ask the person who won the veto, but it's Tucker. Tucker says he wants to finish what he started and battle Cedric in the arena. And Quinn tells some people that Tucker just may not use it. And then that start, starts to shift the target back to Tucker. So they're all like, oh, wait, Tucker might be an option? Oh, okay, let, then let's just get him out. <laughs> Rabina asks Tucker what happens if it's her versus Cedric on the block at the end of the week. Tucker says Cedric leaves. As entertaining as Tucker is, it's hard to deny he has some pretty bad game reads. Because Rabina is 100% leaving over Cedric. Nobody wants to take Cedric out. And I think it's probably too late to even start that conversation. With the momentum that's been made for both Mackenzie and Rabina. Like that that battle is still ongoing, so I don't think there's room for the for for Cedric consideration. Just saw I had a hair sticking up like alfalfa. Tucker says if he's wit if he wins HOH, he's putting up Quinn next to the love of his life, who doesn't care about him. He was a little more vulgar than that, but doesn't care about him. Leah. And I'm like, okay, he has one good read. He says that he's fine with not using the veto if Rabina is nervous about her own chances. 
He says he wants to guarantee taking out who he wants out. And I'm just like, Tucker, you can't do that if you're not here. Because you are one unfavorable comp result from leaving in that AI arena. We don't know how equitable it's going to be. It could go to anybody, which means that then if it's really equitable, you'll only have a one in three chance of winning as opposed to the far better odds he had of winning the last two times. So if that doesn't go his way and he leaves, then Angela and Rabina, his two closest allies at this point, they're going to follow him right out the door. I just, I feel like when it comes to his game, he doesn't really see the forest for the trees. He doesn't realize just how how many people would be impacted by his increasingly chaotic decisions. And uh, Brooklyn starts playing her games with Rabina. She asks, why wouldn't you let Tucker stay on the block if he's willing to not use it? Which is a fair point. And Rabina has a good relationship with Brooklyn, so I feel like this is something Rabina was probably considering. t -Core tells Kima that if Quinn was really for their alliance, the Visionaries, their final three, if he was really for their alliance, he would have put Leah up. And again, they weren't exactly assertive telling him to do that. And again, t -Core has all the ammo to bury Leah to Quinn. All she has to say is, Leah says you give her the ick. And then Quinn realizes that Leah is not his ally. Leah is a valuable and viable option for him. And it would actually be a pretty clean move for him, all things considered. I mean, as clean as it can be for him, considering just how much of a mess he made getting to this HOH. Which he shouldn't have told anybody about. Can you imagine? I, I was last night seeing deepfake Angela. I'm just thinking... How great would this have been if nobody knew about it? Or at least if not everybody knew about it. Cause that, like I said, I wouldn't have told anybody about this. Not a single person. So. It's like. You've made a mess, Quinn. So. Why not find a way to get less blood on your hands at the end of this week, because no one will care if Leah leaves, not even Mackenzie at this point. They're not close with each other anymore. Leah is just there. t -Car also says that Joseph thinks he's better at the game than he is. Which is true, but he's definitely doing better than the two of them. I mean, all they do is sit around and talk. At least Joseph is actually m moving. Like, he's trying to put his plans into motion, and he's had, I wouldn't say no success, I'd say limited success. You know, he kind of reformed the collective. They're they're hanging on by a thread, but in this house, they're the closest thing to a, to a majority alliance. There was, there was some water in in this part. And when I took a sip, it went up my nose. <laughs> Tucker tells Rabina he's not sure what to do with the veto. Rabina says it'd be cool for him if he didn't use it, stayed on, and beat Cedric in the arena like he was talking about. And obviously this is a very thinly veiled way of her trying to keep herself out of harm's way. 
And Tucker still thinks Cedric would leave if he's on the block at the end of the week. So, yeah. It is weird how Tucker is the most powerful player in the game, and yet he really, until he's HOH, cannot make the move he wants to make. And even then, he might not be able to make it. Because people might unify against him. Sorry. It's still there. Tucker tells Angela he's thinking about not using it. Angela tells him, don't stay on the block. And she tells him that he can't trust Rubina because she's close to Quinn and they're working together. And honestly, I found this rather dirty. Tucker has two allies in this house, Angela and Rubina, and Angela wants to be his only ally. So she's just driving a wedge between them. And I, like, I don't know. It didn't sit right with me. It's like, I want you all to myself. But it works. Because from here, he seems convinced to use it on himself. Quinn tells t and Chemo he still wants to flip on the Collective and the Pentagon, but he can't do that with Tucker still here. Like, Tucker is basically a boogeyman to everybody in this game. And honestly, if Tucker ends up winning this game, he will be a Big Brother legend, because my god. He has had everyone coming after him, and he's still at least with this AI arena borderline untouchable. I still think as soon as they can properly backdoor people again, the AI arena's gone. I think that's when they're gonna get Tucker out. Or at least try to. Just gonna... But the first time his name isn't drawn for veto, and he's not HOH, then that should be the end of Tucker. Like, Tucker's time in the game will end five days early. Like, we'll know when he's the target, and they're trying to backdoor him, and his name isn't pulled for the veto. He's going to spend the last five days in that house knowing he's leaving, which is... Probably not a good feeling. In fact, even if he does somehow lose that veto when he gets picked, then again, he's still going to have that feeling. Tucker tells Rubina he's going to use the veto on himself, and they need to cool things off with each other so they don't become bigger targets. So Angela got her way, and Tubina shippers are in mourning. For now. We'll see if they can actually resist each other. So there's a, a five points meeting, minus Brooklyn. Quick reminder, it's Tucker. Sorry, Tucker, Rabina, t and Chemo. And Brooklyn, but again, she's not here. Tucker is frustrated that Cam won't work with him. He's frustrated that Quinn is a snake. He tells them he won't tell Angela about five points. She already knows, and so does Joseph. Tucker asks, how do you guys really feel about that? Oh, sorry. How do you guys really feel about Brooklyn? And they defend her. They're like, they're, they're all good with her. And they just think that Angela has it in for her because Angela sees her as the mom rival. Like, Angela really has it in her head that she and Brooklyn were meant to be against each other. Angela's like, there has to be a mom rivalry, not a mom alliance. And listen, Angela started like this. Angela started the bad relationship with Brooklyn. When it comes to Angela versus Lisa, at the end of the day, we don't really know, but Angela versus Brooklyn. Angela definitely started it. Angela doesn't like her. She thinks she's her rival. And so now Brooklyn doesn't like Angela. And 
with Brooklyn, it's mostly just because she's chaos. t and Cedric talk. They agree they want Tucker out. t wants him out, like, for her own personal peace. And Cedric wants him out because he's a competitor. So, I understand both reasons, I guess. Chelsea thinks that Tucker won't use the veto on himself. So this is an instance of Chelsea maybe being a little bit behind, finally. I'm usually on top of things, but that's when she really kind of... She's in the wrong here. So I'm thinking... There might actually be some surprises on this thing that shouldn't surprise anyone. A nominee won the veto. Why are we debating? Why are we unsure if they're going to use the veto on themselves? This is... This is what Tucker has done to Big Brother. <laughs> Tucker does, in fact, use the veto on himself. And Rubina is nominated. So, we have our three contenders for the AI arena. It is Cedric, Mackenzie, and Rubina. Chelsea talks to Quinn. Again, Chelsea really wants her being out. She, she is confident that this is the right move. She tells Quinn she'd rather get Rabina out than Mackenzie because of how close Rabina is to Tucker. Which, to be fair, is definitely the best reason to target Rabina. But Quinn just doesn't see Rabina as much of a threat. And to be fair, she has not done particularly well in uh, competition so far. She does fine in conversations, don't worry. So yeah, Quinn doesn't see Rabina as a threat, and Chelsea admits that he's right to not trust Mackenzie because she did throw his name out. So, there is some bad blood there. Alright, so that's all my notes. So, time to check to see if there have been any updates since I, uh, since I started. All right, nothing on my main timeline, other than Cat from uh, BB Twenty One sharing a picture, uh, sharing a video of Tucker and his dog. Tucker shouted out his dog many times. Brother Daily hasn't updated in three hours, so I'll check Hamster Watch. It has been kind of a slow day so far. Like when I was looking at Hamster Watch earlier, they were just they just said just a lot of random chit chat today. Yeah. Not a lot going on today. I mean, I'll check Reality Barbecue. Hashtag? Anything on the hashtag? Oh, yeah. Um, there was an earthquake today near, like, in, in California. They, they said it was near Pasadena. I'm not sure how close Pasadena is to the Big Brother house, but I saw uh, Taylor said she felt it. So, who knows? Maybe, maybe I did feel it.
Yeah. Slow day. I'm going to call it here because my chair keeps sinking on me. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my one viewer for watching. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Nick Grimes YT. I have links to my Twitch channel and my YouTube channel there. I post all my streams on YouTube so you can catch up if you missed any. And uh, that's all I got for this stream. I'll see you next time. Don't forget, tomorrow, Tuesday, there's a special extra episode where Jag Taylor and Cody Cauliflower are going to talk about the drama of this season so far, and also Ainsley's new twist is going to be revealed. So, I've decided I probably need to watch this episode, even though I'm not particularly looking forward to it, because I only like one of those three winners. But yeah, I'll I'll watch it. I might... I'll probably talk about the twist, at least. But yeah, that will do it for this stream. I will see you next time. Peace out.